as an artist, we're so inhibited to create or use what's really at the core of us because we feel like we need to mediate it or filter it through our education, our experiences, our um, knowledge. But this for me was really kind of a revelation that, that something so genuinely a part of my past and something that never was related to art at all could be an artwork. Gone. When I was in graduate school at Hunter College, I made this video and I had my dad play this fictitious character. Gone. Gone. While showing it to one of my professors. And he said, oh, well, if you're going to use your father, then it raises questions for me. Like, is this in any way tied to other aesthetics like home movies or family snapshots? And suddenly, a light just went off in my head. And I remembered, wait, there's all these home movies with my grandmother that I hadn't thought about in over a decade. When I went back to my parents' home, I didn't even know at first that the videos would still be there. As women, we always talk about how we should look, but what's a good But I, I found this box and I started opening it up and pulling out the tape. We still had an old VHS player in the house and I started playing them and I was just fascinated by what I was finding. There's a gun pointed right at my head. <laughs> I made most of these videos with my grandmother. I shot them when I was 12 or 13. I think I kind of was very much from an early age involved in a very kind of insular, imaginative world inside my own head. I didn't really go on dates. I didn't go to my prom. I didn't go out a lot on the weekends. I really kind of just kept to myself. So yeah, this is another space of just a ton of materials from from our past at our store down here. Kind of my, my favorites here is our collection of laser discs. Now it's been a lot of time in front of the television just watching these films um, by Scorsese, by Kubrick. You know, like Taxi Driver was this film I saw when I was really young and it was really disturbing. It still is. You talking to me? Uh, uh, are you talking to me? It was kind of the opposite of living in this quiet suburban place where kind of nothing happens and everything's mundane, where this person just has this like unleashes this like world of violence and fury and aggression. Me that she would like actually get well, into that. Well, because, she actually murdered me. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I don't think it was me. She killed me, me uh, as, the, as the salesman. I don't know if she really got the gist of it, but I think she thought it was like comical and fun. There's a real intimacy between my grandmother performing for the camera and me as this, her grandson behind the camera, that there's this conversation that happens that I was completely oblivious to it at the time. But now when I look back, it seems so gentle and also personal. I thought, this is who I really am. Like these interests in the abject and the absurd and the humor and the, the gender inversions and the kind of fragility and the conversations between a performer and, the, and me behind the camera was really getting the core of what I wanted out of an, out of an artwork. I was really interested in how can I make the works more vulnerable, more fragile, more unpredictable, more exposed. And the first thought was that they could become performances. When the first performance happened, it was this piece where I boxed this old bully of mine dressed up as a wolf. And I came out in these little tiny boxing trunks with no shirt on, and I had a boxing gloves, and I was dancing around the ring. 
I was just so exposed and it was a real fight. It wasn't choreographed at all. And he just was beating the crap out of me. Someone in the audience yelled, stop the fight. And I thought, oh, this must be going well as a first performance because people are really uncomfortable. And I used my parents because I was interested in creating these kind of layers to the work. There's a kind of particular messiness between real life and fiction and performing and living, and I'd like that to come across. Okay. Um, and then you, he looks at me, you look at the control panel. So let me just see. I look at you. You look at me where I am, and mom, where do you look? It's pretty specific in his mind what, what he would like to have us do. But then we make adjustments. Yeah. You, I well, mean, you, I do. You, you make more adjustments <laughs> than me. I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy going. No, mom, but you look at the control panel, and my yeah, father. Not every single moment. Yeah, the whole time, just stare at it. Don't make. Um... <laughs> That's going to be very boring. One of the things that really directs the content of the pace performance was the specificity of that locale. That I loved the hallways and spaces around the gallery because it reminded me of my high school. And that I could almost return to my high school, but now I'm in this awkward display case. I remember times in my high school when I felt really shy, I'd walk down the hallway, I had a really bad haircut my sophomore year, and I wouldn't want people to look at me. But now I thought, now you really have to look at me, I'm gonna make you stare. Like, if this is kind of the alter ego to a shy side, then I really want them to look and sustain that, that vision. Being inside that display case, I could roll my structure right up to an audience member that I didn't know at all, slam into him or her, and watch their reaction. And I had the license to do this in a way I would never have if I weren't performing. Here I can just harass people to no end, and they just have to put up with it. Maybe for once, I get to be the bully.